Hello everybody, this is Laura from End Time Apostasy. I hope you guys are doing well. Now, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be using a situation in real life that happened just last night with this gentleman here called Shane Lynch. Now, Shane Lynch was born in 1976, which I guess makes him about 43. And uh, he was in a very famous band in the 1990s, which I'm going to show you now in a minute. So last night, he was actually on The Late Late Show. Now, The Late Late Show has uh, been going for a very long time in Ireland. It's a very famous, um, very, very famous show that I've known since I was a very small child. This started up in the 1960s in Ireland. You ask anybody in Ireland, do they know Gay Byrne and The Late Late Show? And they'll, they'll yeah, they know Gay Byrne. Everybody knows Gay Byrne. He's very famous. But anyway, so back in 1993, um, this band here, this here, Boyzone, were founded. They were put together by this fella here, Louis Walsh, who is literally up the road from me. He's um, in, whoops, he's actually living up in Dogie in a castle up there. So he's not that far away from me. So anyway, he's on the X Factor with, with Simon Cowell and, and all of those types, okay? So, they founded him on the Late Late Show, this band here. Now, this man here is Shane Lynch. Now, Shane Lynch claimed that he came to know Jesus in 2003. And I'm going to show you a clip here of him talking about such things. Okay, uh, let me just get this for you. So, here he is talking. Um in 2018, February 2018, that he loves Jesus and that he loves God. And a lot of people, when he first got quote-unquote saved, thought that this gentleman was actually a born-again Christian here in Ireland. So I, I was kind of questioning it because he was giving his testimony, but he was charging for people to get in to hear his testimony because he had been in a pop band, a very well-known pop band, very famous here in Ireland and in England, and I think in Europe too. They've had number one sing singles, uh, you know, millionaire lifestyle, all of it, okay? So I'm going to play this for you here. I'm going to And I'm going to let you listen to what this gentleman talks about. And then I'm going to show you something, okay? Something else that he said which is going to shock you. So let's just play this. So what you're about to hear sounds very convincing. It sounds like this gentleman really is following the true Jesus, our Lord and Savior. But listen to this first. I grew up in a, a household of uh, Catholicism for sure and we went to mass on a Sunday but when I left all that and went to, to England and music I became very anti-Christ and I was I got involved into kind of uh, the occult, uh, witchcrafts, you know, that kind of stuff. And the quickest way to say it is, because I knew the dark side, it meant there had to be a light side. As quick and easy as that. And I was in a bad, bad, troubled place. So, through a friend of mine, a guy uh, in a band called Facts and Smalls. Uh, turn around. Turn around, correct. He, he showed me, big tune, he showed me a different light and showed me his mannerisms in life. And I questioned him why, and why he was so happy. I had potentially everything which I was surrounded by, uh, all the materials, blessings you could possibly want, but I didn't have what he, his contentment, and I wanted to know why. And in my questioning of, about who he was, he started to feed biblical stories and the parables were relative, relative to how I was living my life today. And lucky enough, I kind of saw that light, kept going for that light, and you know, God is my world, my absolute world. And I, th I think without that kind of understanding of how to the control or the discipline and pulling back that, yeah, I, I think it would have been it. maybe not here today. I don't, I don't really know. But I, I'm blessed and I'm blessed and I love my God and I love my Jesus and I'll never be without him for sure. Okay, so I suppose you notice that he blessed himself now, which is a Roman Catholic thing to do. Now, this was actually done in 26th of February 2018 at 7. Now, it says here that, and I remember this, that he said that he was actually a born-again Christian. Now, 
people would have said, oh yeah, gone to hear his testimony, yeah, he's a born-again Christian. When last night, um, let me just come over here, last night, the Late Late Show is now run by a guy called Ryan Tuberty, Tuberty, sorry, and Ryan lives in Dunleary, I've seen him around a lot, um, and I'm from Dunleary myself. Now, this gentleman here is a sweet gentleman, but he is a um, has a talk show here in Ireland, very well known, and they had that gentleman on, Shane Lynch. Now what I'm about to show you is a clip, okay, so Shane Lynch was on the Late Late Show last night, and you know, he's saying to people that he loves Jesus and that he's a Christian, okay, but yet I want you to watch this. Now, this is back in 1993, which is about 25 years ago, I think, or something like that. And I was 25 at the time, and I remember seeing this clip from the very beginning. So this, they're they're basically showing showing you a clip of how this band Boyzone was founded. Okay, so this is the original, um, I suppose expose, ex, it, you know, showing them when they first started, and they're just basically laughing because they weren't prepared. Louis Louis Walsh, this fella here was preparing them the night before they went on to the Late Late Show so this looks really funny and it's not well rehearsed and it's pretty terrible but listen to what Shane has to say now this is last night remember that this gentleman says that he loves Jesus that he loves God okay so let's go <sighs> Okay, so now you were looking at the Late Late Show in Ireland, all right, Ryan Tuberty. The next fellow you're going to see is Shane Lynch. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what's the story behind that clip? Like, what is it? Here's what's the story behind that clip. I posted my bollocks to get here. Did you see that clip? Because shove up your fucking hole. <laughs> now, I hope you understood his accent. And you hear him swearing up a, up a storm, basically. Says he loves Jesus of the Bible, but yet he's cussing up a storm. That's good. Exactly. It's, it's, it's not true. Yeah, yeah, not no, we, we see it as a bit of fun. I don't remember the early days. You don't see it as a bit of fun. What about you, Jack? Do you find it more amusing than Shane? Or? <laughs> Come on. We were young, 16, 17 years yeah. of age. We, 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 you know, Louis Walsh had literally put us together the night before. He said the first thing you're going to do is a band. So there you go. So that, guys, is uh, an example of when someone says that they love Jesus, you're not to just believe it. You don't take it on board and say, oh yeah, that's right, I love Jesus. Which Jesus does, do you love? And let's come over to 2 Corinthians. Okay, okay. But I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom ye have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or a what another gospel, which ye have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Okay. So, guys, that's what the scripture says. That if So, what is a Christian? Now, I know some of you who are listening to me will not be a born-again Christian. Or, in what the Bible states, as being a Christian. A true Christian. The real Jesus. The real Jesus of Nazareth. Okay? Now, a lot of us here in Ireland brought up Catholics and brought up Protestants. Some of us were brought up in other religions in Ireland as well. Um, so I'm not under the idea that a lot of people tend to think we're primarily uh, uh, Catholic. I suppose you could say that, but a lot of a lot of people in Ireland don't really go to Catholic Mass anymore, only a few do. 
But that's not Christian. Catholic Mass is not Christianity because it's all about doing good deeds to try and get to God. Now, let me just explain. Uh, first of all, you're in a situation like I am and like everybody else in the world is. We're all sinners. We've all broken the law of God. So what is the law of God? Well, let's consider this. When we were young kids, I know uh, me being brought up as, unfortunately, as a Roman Catholic, but however, uh, we were taught the Ten Commandments. And we were told to keep the Ten Commandments. And quite frankly, the Bible says that's impossible. Because if we break one of the Ten Commandments, we break the whole lot. So when the Lord says, you shall not have any false gods before me, if you love something, or someone, or a pop star, or chocolate, or whatever it is, more than you love Jesus, that's an idol. And you've broken the First Commandment. Now we've all done that. My idol as a young girl was Duran Duran. And I loved them. I, in the 1980s, I'm now 50, so I was a teenager then. So that was my idol. And, um, you know, and me. I was my idol because it was all about me and all about myself and what I could get, okay? So, if you broke even one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal. Uh, I remember when I was little, I, I used to steal candy or sweets, as they say here in Ireland. And I would watch her and see if Daddy was watching me or Mommy was watching me. Yeah, they were watching me. And, and I knew what I was doing was wrong. But let me tell you, little children, according to the scripture, go directly to be with Jesus if they die. But what I want you to understand, if you're an adult and you're still living in sin, and this is what the Bible says, um, the world, the flesh, and the devil. In other words, that you're out getting drunk, swearing up, cussing up a storm, um, doing all these things right and living for yourself and going your own way. You are lost, what the Bible calls as lost. Have you ever heard that song? I once was, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Okay, was blind, but now I see. So when we are born, we are born into a sinful nature and the devil has blinded the eyes. We can't see spiritually the truth of who Jesus really is. Jesus Christ is God, fully God and fully man, and he walked on the earth. And what Jesus did on the cross is he died on the cross, um, and he shed his blood to cover over the consequences of our sin, and to cover over that sin so that we could go to heaven and not be condemned to hell because Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh to the Father but by me Jesus said I am the light Jesus said I am the door so Jesus is the door to eternal life and he's the door to you being saved from going to hell because you're a sinner and we've all sinned so Jesus Christ died on the cross was buried and he rose on the third day he overcame death and Jesus is still alive today now the Bible says that we are to repent and repent means to change our mind and to put our trust in the finished work on the cross that Jesus paid your sin in full paid for your sin in full so that you wouldn't have to go to hell so what you do is you go to Jesus through the cross and you end up going to heaven to be with Jesus forever and ever. And Jesus said, once you are saved, you are always saved. You cannot lose that. It's a gift. The Lord said this also, that your good deeds will not get you to heaven. He said, it is not, it is not by your works. The Bible says, for it is by grace, now the graciousness of God, that we are saved. Not of ourselves lest no man should boast. So you don't, good deeds don't get you to heaven. Um, for it is by grace through faith that you are saved, not of yourself, lest no man should boast. So you can't get to heaven and go, well, God, I did this good deed, and I did that good deed, and I helped the little old lady across the street. No, that's not how it works. When you get to heaven, Jesus will say, why do I let you in here? And you'll say, because of what you did on the cross, Jesus. Because you died for my sin. And I repented, and I trusted on the finished work of the cross in Calvary. Now, what he did was a supernatural thing, because he overcame the devil. Because the devil has you deceived. He makes you think that there's no God, because he doesn't want you 
to go to heaven. He wants you to be in hell with him forever and ever. And he's what they call the enemy of our soul. So, does Jesus love Shane Lynch? Yes, he does. Is is Shane Lynch, in other words, born again, as in you are born once from your parents, and then you have to be spiritually born again. So you need to be born of the Spirit of the Living God. Now the Holy Spirit comes and he convicts us of our sin. And once we feel that conviction, we can then respond or we can reject. Either way. But there's when you're alive, there's always hope. Does God love Shane? You betcha he loves Shane Lynch. Does he want to co Shane to come to know the true Jesus? You betcha he does. He loves, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him shall have eternal life. So, if somebody is listening to this and you're not a Christian and you want to understand about being a Christian, what I advise you to do is write to me underneath the comment and I will get back to you and I will endeavour to help you with this. Okay, and I will lead you to the truth. And if you can, go get yourself a King James Version Bible, because that's the true scripture of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So guys, that's all I have for you at the moment. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, and may the Lord let his light to shine upon you. And I'll talk to you super soon. Bye for now. Bye-bye.